Sorry, lost in my emails. Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you Hi, dear. Hi, Mate. Hi, hi. Sorry I'm late. I'm not usually late. Um, <laughs> it's, you can call me a lot of things, but late's not usually one of them. Okay. Um, hi, thank you all for being here for this special meeting. I'm very, very sorry for my tardiness. So um, I'm going to need just one second. Chair, just to let you know, we have Juan Morales who will be um, interpreting for this meeting. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Have you already made that announcement? Not yet. We were waiting on you. I'm, again, my apologies. So go ahead. Uh, all right. I call this meeting to order. Uh, this is a special um, Matt Springs Municipal Advisory Council meeting. Um, we have one item on the agenda. And um, I call this meeting to order. And would you like to make the interpretation announcement now? Esta reunión cuenta con interpretación al español. Si nos está viendo a través de Zoom, puede hacer clic en la pantalla, en la parte baja de su pantalla. Encontrará un icono que dice interpretation o interpretación. Si hace clic y selecciona español, automáticamente estará escuchando la reunión en español con nuestro intérprete Juan Morales. Y si nos está viendo a través de uh, Facebook, la información para conectarse a Zoom está en um, la parte de el anuncio. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Karina. So we'll do a uh, roll call. <clears throat> Vice Chair Ray Willett. Here. Thank you. Um, Council Member um, Marika Mendez. Uh, Council Member Iris Lombard. Here. Council Member Avram Goldman. Avram is absent tonight and um, I'm here. Okay. Uh, we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. So our one item tonight, again, thank you all for your flexibility with this schedule. Um, we are <clears throat> we're looking to do a pop-up clinic, but we need your um, support on the item if we are to co-sponsor it um, and be a part of it and use our logo and resources. And we have Alvaro from um, the health clinic and Mari Carmen is our uh, Springs Municipal Advisory Council member who um, represents a nonprofit in the area and she um, is also here can speak to the event and Karina has been doing a lot of legwork to make this all happen so thank you to Karina um, and Lynn Marie thank you for being here and taking notes uh, so we just wanted to talk a little bit about what it might look like and have give you the opportunity to ask questions and then ask if you approve of this uh, concept of uh, co-sponsoring the pop-up clinic. Marty or Alvaro, do you want to talk a little bit about what it might look like? Sure, I can go. And I'm so sorry, um, for some reason, my camera is not working. So uh, I did my hair for nothing, I guess, today. <laughs> so uh, good to meet everybody. Um, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. We are very excited about um, this, hopefully this clinic happening at Fiesta Plaza. And um, what we call it is a neighborhood pest. Um, and it's a safe space and a warm space where people can come and talk um, about the vaccine, COVID-19, uh, find resources that they maybe haven't been able to find uh, throughout the year. Um, we will also be providing the vaccine as well, a vaccination clinic. So, and we will have a doctor on site as well. So if people have questions, uh, again, they don't feel comfortable asking somewhere else. Uh, they can come to us and just use that time to ask those questions. To, if they feel they got the answer that they're looking for, maybe they will get the vaccine right there. 
Um, if not, maybe they can go home and talk with their family and discuss, and maybe the next time that they will come around. So that's the idea is to have a, uh, an environment where people can feel part of the community again, just because throughout this year or over a year now, everybody's been so far away and there's so much information flying around um, that people believe everything pretty much. Uh, so we want to be their resource uh, for them to find facts uh, in a way and to see other people that have uh, gotten the vaccine and talk about that as well. So, um, because a lot of time it's nice to know somebody that got the vaccine or went through the process and that will make a bigger impact than just seeing it on the news on online. So the idea is to have some food, entertainment, um, could be ice creams or could be tacos to give away. So if you get a vaccine, maybe you get a taco uh, or we have raffles at the end of the day. So people, even if you don't get a vaccine, you get some sort of a prize at the end. Um, but again, it's just to make the community feel welcome without the pressure of, okay, I have to get the vaccine or if I don't get it, I'm gonna be judged. I just trying to learn the facts uh, and especially now with the vaccine being available to kids older and uh, 12 and older, uh, probably parents will have even more questions. So we want to be there for them as well. Uh, and again, we will have the option uh, for people to get the vaccine right there uh, if they choose to. And then uh, the idea is to have it uh, four weeks after, uh, just a follow up for the second dose um, vaccine and also uh, the idea is to have it, uh, if it's during the week, later in the afternoon, just for people to come out of uh, school or get out of work. Um, and if it's during the weekend, uh, maybe at some point in the afternoon, again, just because the weather is nicer, people are getting back their liberty. So they're going out and partying and whatnot. So we have to compete with that. So we're trying to find the best solution for that. But um, that's the main idea is to have a space um, place so we can uh, vaccinate and educate the community, a place where we can uh, engage the younger community as well, uh, just because now is their turn. And also to engage with other uh, uh, members of the community that they're still hesitant to get a vaccine. So, um, and maybe now they will feel better coming out and talking to somebody about it. So um, that's the idea. And also we will try to include uh, emergency preparedness in this program. So since fire season is up on us right now. So, and all this goes hand in hand because last year with the fire and the evacuation, uh, people had to, be put uh, in hotels just because of COVID-19 and they didn't want it to spread it. Uh, and it was just more complicated, the whole process. And this year, the hotels are back in action right now. So they would rather have pay clients um, to use that space instead of uh, just people um, getting away from the fire. So even just that might have people change their mind. And uh, again, we want to have that presence as well. So. And is we wanted to present it as a whole. We will probably, this won't go away. So it will be part of our lives. So how we make it work, how we make ourselves feel comfortable moving forward and how, how to make sure that we have the tools necessary uh, to make the community back, um, bring it back to life again. And we feel welcome and we know where to reach out for help if it's needed. Um, oh, yes, ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I don't know if Mary Carmen wants to add anything. Thank you. Hi, Alvaro. I think you did an excellent um, job. And um, I I need to switch really quick to the interpretation. One second, please. Um, I don't know if you can still hear me. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, and um, I'm sorry that we're taking care of this right now, but it's not allowing me to record, Karina. So 
I'm trying. Um, as I usually record the, the Spanish one, but it's not allowing me. I just gave you the permission to do so. Can you try again? It says that it needs um, host permission. Um, but okay. anyhow. Um, try uh, again. Sorry, can you try again, please? Yes. Uh, while you guys uh, feed that, uh, figure that out. Uh, I also would like to mention that we will need the volunteers and part of the community to be present as well. And we will love to have you guys share um, the word with your circles, with the people that you know, with your friends, even if they got vaccinated already, maybe they can come and talk with people that are still hesitant because their experience might be similar to the ones that the, these people are uh, being a uh, part of. So, um, and it would be nice for you as well to be present and kind of start, I guess it's a new way of learning how the community will work move forward uh, because uh, we want it or not, uh, I, I don't think things are gonna go back to the old normal. There's gonna be a new normal and all these events, they're gonna help us uh, start learning how the community start working around, how they're moving around, what makes them feel comfortable and whatnot. Um, so it would be great for, us to have your support and also um, again we start we have to start building this sense of community moving forward and we're all this together we're not none of us going anywhere anytime and it's time soon um, but we have to be prepared for whatever comes our way because after this uh, you never know so uh, I think that's this is going to strengthen the relationship that we have the community with the community and the community realize that we're here for them so I have, Mari, did you want to add anything? Because I um, will toss it to the council to ask if there are any questions. Did you figure out your situation or do you need more time? Mari, no, and I think I'll just, um, sorry if with, with the interruption with the recording, but um, I, I just wanted to reiterate that um, I think Alvaro went pretty much over all the important um, points of we of why, um, first of all, it's important to do a, a vaccine, uh, or as many vaccine clinics as we can in the spring. Um, but uh, I think working uh, with the MAC, it's especially important because we are the reps, or, or we're the ones who are advocating for our community at the county level. And, um, with the zip code being so broad, it's really hard to know exactly how many people have been vaccinated in what specific areas. So um, joining with the Metro neighborhood and really being able to do a door-to-door -door surveying, you know, the neighborhoods um, and starting to create that report with the community also for future, um, any future disasters or um, any other emergencies is, is really the time to really also start uh, getting a head start on on on, on this work um, that it's going to be inevitable as well because we're going to have to deal with it sometime in the future, and uh, we might as well start getting our, our foot in there too. Um, and the fact the that the the owner of Guesta Plaza agreed that is such a, a such an important step that he is meeting us halfway, or I would say of a third of all or a fourth of the way because, you know, we're looking forward to collaborating with the MAC and with Map Your Neighborhood. Um, and so that's just, uh, it really, it's gonna take a village. So I have a, I think, let's see if there are any questions from the MAC. Um, Ray or Iris, do you have any questions? Yes, Ray. Um, of our, uh, what, what age are you, you said, were you were expecting uh, are, are we going to be vaccinating 12 and up at the at the clinic we're proposing or the the event is that uh, our goal or do you think we'll be there yet or what, what is what is the goal for that most the likely democracy? we will be um allowed to start tomorrow or friday as the latest so by that time yes that yeah, will be good. an option for sure yes Okay, great. I, I love everything about this. Um, I love the um, the the reach out and and, and the tie in with the um, with the fire safe and map your um, neighborhood uh, um, disaster preparedness com component of this. 
Um, I think it's a natural um, fit for the, the health center to be involved in, in, in the disaster preparedness of, in, in our neighborhood as, as they might be able to help with, with the response in that as they have now and, and, and with other things. So um, it has my full support, yeah. Thank you, Ray. Um, Iris, do you have any questions? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I've missed the place that this is being planned to do. At the plaza, at the shopping area where the movie theater is. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Fine. That's that's great, and, and that's nice and big. So, <laughs> um, and are we really only looking at doing this um, basic, you know, one time with you know, with a repeat a month later to catch the second uh, vaccines, um, or would it be ongoing? Because it seems like um, a great is, idea. Uh, Great so idea. In terms of, of vaccine pop-up clinics, we are looking to host different clinics. We're also working with the North Valley uh, MAC to do one in Glen Allen. Uh, we're going to be doing with, one with El Verano this Saturday. We're setting up something with Burbank Housing as well, and then any more, um, you know, that, that do come up. So, um, and we're also looking to start setting this as an example of going into the neighborhoods to do neighbor fests um, to, again, educate the, inform the community on emergency preparedness and also uh, continue, um, you know, seeing, um, we're discussing the vaccine hesitancy and, and if people are willing to get vaccinated, uh, continue working with that. Um, so it's, it's, not the only, it's not the only one, it would be a one time here. And then in four weeks, we would have to return um, to do um, another, um, the second dose for the people that do deserve to get vaccinated. But uh, Alvaro can speak more to that as well. Can I, okay. uh, Iris, did you have another question? Um, no, that was it. Basically, so you, um, this is part of uh, more pinpointed and localized efforts all around the valley is, yeah. would be our particular participation. That sounds great. That's yeah, great. I'm super excited. I have a couple of questions. Um, one, so we could have our, we could have Iris and Dana and, um, and some people talking about Map Your Neighborhood and getting out the flyers and things that we have available um, to them. Um, would we have any other um, emergency preparedness items we could give out to people that day? That's one question. And then my second question is, um, do we have a date in mind? Have we discussed that with, um, I think his name is Peter. Um, and what does, what are, what are you thinking? Um, yes, uh, we, uh, we're thinking of the sooner the better, uh, just because again, with everything that's going on and there's new information coming out every week pretty much. So uh, I think this, uh, the sooner that we can get into the community uh, would be the best option. So uh, we haven't decided on a specific date yet, but as I mentioned, if it's during the week, it would have to be later in the afternoon when people, uh, get the kids get out of school or get off work. Um, and then if it's during the weekend, it would have to be probably early afternoon, again, just because we had to compete with everything else that is going uh, on right now. And uh, Again, it's kind of like the more the merrier. So if you have more tools available or more information that you can give away um, or anything that might help the neighborhood, feel free to bring it to the table. Like, um, and as kind of like related to the question that Iris said, um, even though this might be just kind of like a two time event, maybe this is an uh, opportunity for you guys to keep the ball rolling maybe it turns into a monthly or event because again, like this information keeps evolving um, and the needs will keep changing. So the mapping information that would be great for the neighborhood and especially right now, because uh, it will start creating this sense of community again and people will know where to go if something happens so that we have a plan. Um, I feel better when I know my exit route. So, and I'm sure everybody else does. Uh, so um, again, the more the merrier. If you have more tools available, we are more than happy to share those with the community. Mike, 
Yes. Um, just thinking about uh, traffic and, and all that, it, it, it seems as though it might be better to, to do it on a, a early afternoon on the weekend rather than later in the day um, during the week because the traffic just gets so backed up uh, in that area. And um, that would might prove daunting to people. Besides yeah. I, I, I have to agree. It's very tough to get down that highway. So maybe we could look at a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday. I don't know what you're, how far you're booked out, but um, it might be better to try to do a weekend afternoon. And as of right now, uh, we're doing the pop-up a la luz on Sundays. So probably we'll have to be on a Saturday. Uh, so we have more resources available and we don't compete with another pop-up right next, uh, very close to in the same neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know we've got El Verano this week, um, this weekend at three o'clock too. So there's another option. Um, it, it sounds like um, the MAC is our, but we're willing to put forth some funds to help with snacks and refreshments for the volunteers. So um, we have to, um, we will have to motion for our agreement on um, participating in this event and then approving um, $400 for snacks and refreshments for the volunteers. Are we ready for that or do we have more questions or more information we need? The question I would have is how many volunteers do you anticipate needing actually? How hard are we gonna to have to beat the bushes? Uh, so total is about 20 people okay. that we would need uh, to feed or especially if it's a hot day, it's more than uh, it's we need to give them high trade and the water and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it's around 20 people or so. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so you're going to need to make a, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was, do you want to, do you want to go ahead and make a motion then to um, adopt this resolution or do you have any more questions? I have one more question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm confused on the number of volunteers. And the only reason I'm confused is because I know how many volunteers we're using for El Verano on Saturday. So those are two big dif number difference in numbers. We're doing seven here. It sounds like you need 20 for that. Is that correct, Alvaro? Is that, am I right? Yes, and again, in Canada, since it's a bigger space traffic, we're kind of counting um, more things into consideration. It's now like a smaller space where we can kind of manage it better. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Because we're um, doing it at our commercial area and the traffic. We want, we're also expecting a bigger crowd um, because it's not only will be a vaccine clinic, but also making it like a neighbor fest and we'll be kind of our, our first one to kind of see how the, when does how the works. theater open? Is it open, going to be open then? Or I don't no? know. Okay. The I didn't think the theater was going to reopen at all. It is. I just, is it? Somebody bought it. Somebody, oh, okay. another group. Yeah. Yep. 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 I missed that part. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we're probably close to making a motion. And I just want to con just want to confirm that the budget is not to exceed $400. So um, that's just to make sure that everyone knows that. I can't drink that much water. Well, I'll make a motion to that that we approve um, a partnership with the Sonoma Sonoma Valley Community Health Center to host a, a pop up vaccine clinic in the springs, a date and time to be determined with a budget not to exceed four hundred dollars. If anyone would like to would like to second. Second. Okay, so Ray uh, first, uh, Iris second. Um, do I t need to do a roll call vote, um, Karina, or can we? Uh, yes, you do. Okay. Um, Vice Chair Ouellette? Uh, I'll vote for, yeah. Um, Vice uh, Chair or uh, Councilperson Lombard? Uh, I, I vote for it. Thank you. Councilperson Reyes? Yeah, you're good. Okay. And I vote yes too. Okay, it's unanimous. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, 
very excited to have this partnership and work with you to make this all to make this work for our community. So thank you. And thank you, Karina, for all your work to make it happen too and putting all those connections together. Very much appreciate it. Very, very much. Um, is there anything else we need to do? Do we need to move to end of the meeting? We need to move to adjourn the meeting. Yes. I, I move to adjourn the meeting then. Is if there no a one has anything else. Ray seconds. All in favor? Aye. And, um, as, as a Mac, we just need to know um, because there will be an opportunity to also have like an average table for the Mac. So we can also think about that, what information we want to have there. So that's something to start thinking about. Okay. And this is our first opportunity to really have outreach, a direct outreach with the community. So we'll have a lot to learn at good practice. Thank you, Money Kahneman. Okay, if there's nothing else, um, Money Kahneman, can you stay on for one second? I have one question for you. I can't do that. Okay. All right. Um, I can I call her? I can call her, right? Okay. All right. Okay, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.